Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mary Mukhtar and I'm from the department of BS Chemistry. My ID is 004 and this is the course of Industrial Chemistry 2. Today I'm going to talk about my presentation topic, which, in, which is basically water or repellent finish in the textile industry. So what I'm going to tell you in this presentation is all about the chemistry of the fluorocarbon, the chemistry of the C668, and what are the side effects of these and what are the testing or how we can improve the number of watching. So let me take a start with the introduction. Water and oil repellency are among the most common functional properties necessary for the protective clothing. These properties can be conferred by the modification of the surface energy of the textile fiber. The modification route should meet the criteria of the green chemistry as possible. In much particular, the use of the harmless solvent and the non-toxic chemical should be characteristics of the process. Now, if I'm gonna talk about the environmental impact of these finishes or ecological orientation of these. So this will come at this principle in agreement with the ecological orientation of the industrial textile chemistry, limits in a significant way, the number of the variable strategies and reactions. Among them, Photographing by UV light combines the inherent benefit of the photochemical initiation. The advantage of the surface grafting that doesn't modify the bulk properties nor degrade the fiber structure. So it is a very good advantage of this. Grafting has advantage over the modification method in several ways, including easy and controllable introduction of a high density graft chain with the exact localization of the graft side on the fabric surface. So, for a chemically produced triplet state of the carbonyl compound of a suitable photo initiator can be extract hydrogen atom from almost all the polymeric material and polymeric materials are, for example, such as textile fiber, so that the graft polymerization may be initiated. Moreover, when the UVB radiation is applied, the high concentration of the active species can be produced locally at this intersurface in the textile fiber. The monomer solution containing the photo initiator with the sequence of a high yield for the process. The mechanism are as follows. Here we can see the whole mechanism. The reactive species are generated. And this is the flow diagram in which there is a UV lamp, the source of the photo initiator. And then we get radicals, which are textile fiber or oligomers. And oligomers are basically grafted on the fabric surface. Beside the well-known advantages of the UV curing, UV curing is basically a space-saving, easy installation of equipment, reduced weight, high speed of the treatment. These are the advantages of the UV curing. This process consumes about 25% of the energy required by the conventional thermal-based system using a fuel-fired e -wheel. Since it is carried out at very low temperature, Therefore, the functionalization of the cotton surface by the UV cured coating has been proposed to obtain various finishing, and it has effects on the fabric, such as color fastness in the pigment printing, antimicrobial activity, flame retarding, finally, water and oil repellency. The polysilaxons are widely used in the textile finishing to impart softness, seized in resistance and the water repellency. A typical molecular structure of the selen polyoligomer containing reactive acrylic groups for thermal or UV curing is shown in here. We can see the figure of the polysilicon polymer oligomer containing reactive acrylic groups. So the application of the UV grafting of the pores and the kions to cotton fabrics to count for water repellency has been reported recently. This was clearly achieved by the treatment with the both silicon compound showing the water contact angles higher than 90 degree. However, silicon compounds are unable to confer oil repellency. Hence the production and application of different types of fluorochemical for the textile finishing has been reported. These consist of perfluorinated carbon chains, which impart at the same time water and oil plancy to the fiber surface, which are incorporated into the polymer backbone with perfluoro groups as side chains. Here we can see the structure. The currently used fluorocarbons 
Fluor chemicals are based on C6 carbon chains, which, ha which have been replaced by the C8 fluorocarbon. That can release perfluorooctosulfate and perfluorooctanoic acid, which have highly high toxic substance. In fact, in 2009, dopant product under the name of oleophobol CP, based on the short chain molecule that cannot break down into PFOA into in the environment and provide a step chain reduction in the impurities below a certain limit. C6 based fluorocarbon show repellency rating and washing durability much lower than the 6 8 based. Hence, the cross linker, as such as malic acid, were introduced to enhance their performance and durability. The typical molecular structure are shown in this figure. Now, I'm going to talk about the fluorochemical finishing. These are commercially available as a water emulsion and are applied to fabrics by the pad dry cure method. With the thermal curing, the UV grading of the PFAP resins as oleophobal CPC has been tested on the fabric and obtained by the thermal polymerization. Years after UV curing, which was confirmed by the static and the dynamic contact angle measurement, the water plancy was practically uninfected by the repeated washing, regardless of the curing time and the finish element. Finished treatment do not reduce the breathability of the original cotton. The laboratory equipments were carried out on a dried sample. In conclusion, the laboratory scale application of the water and oil plancy on the cotton fiber by the UV grafting of the silicone or fluorocarbon based resin with the optimization of the process parameter followed by the tree preparation of the treatment. The aim of the present study has been semi industrial scale up of the process and to optimize the different parameter which affect the final efficiency of the process. The treatment has been performed in an air to avoid the inert gas composition. Now this was whole and now I'm going to talk about the material and method which was used. There are three different knitted fiber which are used in this work. PM, COT, and VIS. These are the three main knitted fiber that are going to use in this process. So now that there are two methods, UV curing and thermal curing. In UV curing, finishing engine was added as a photo initiator. The sample was dried at 80 degrees for 60 seconds, and then the sample were exposed to the radiation for the one side for 60 seconds. The photo initiator concentration was assessed after the previous test, and we obtained the maximum yield. It is worth to noting that by UV radiation in the air rather than in nitrogen, the radical reaction are slacked by the oxygen interference. Now I'm going to talk about the thermal curing. While the radiation was step by substituted by the thermal treatment in a hot fluid, the temperature was 150 degrees Celsius and five minutes for five minutes. Three samples for each process were prepared in statistical treatment of data. Water and oil plancy absorbance was tested by measuring the time it takes a drop liquid placed on the fabric surface to completely absorb into the fabrics. According to these met testers, the contact angle were evaluated and thus we can measure it. The test liquid were used HPLC grade water paraffin oil. The contact angle considered were the average of the least five measurement. So thus from this formula, we can calculate the determination of the colorness difference between them. Now, we should talk about the result and the discussion. The study about the water oil plancy has been performed on three fabrics. Have we seen then just COT, VIS, and the other one? The main parameter considered and varied besides substrate were finishing agent and which are directly related to the final add-on. Obtained results are evaluated in terms of absorbency of water, oil, droplet on the treated surface, contact angle, and color measurement. Now, I'll talk about these parameters one by one. Absorbency of the water and oil drops on the fabrics. Absorption time of the water or paraffin oil drop with a volume of 10 meter were evaluated on the PM and COT sample treated by oleophobol. If the drop wasn't absorbed after 120 minutes, the test was stopped and the substrate was considered completely repellent toward the considered liquid. The result and parameters are 
some right here. Here we can see that after 120 minutes, this is the water oil plant C, this is the this is the water plan C, this is the oil plan C. If the after 120 minutes, it, the absorbency doesn't occur, then we'll come to know this result that the substance was completely repellent toward the concentrated liquid. Contact angle measurement. The contact angle measure on all the treatment samples clearly show the fact of the finishing agent. Fluorocarbon came finishing while the similar contact angles were measured on the sample and the surface with super repellency shown in so-called lotus effect. Oleophobol, the result of the water and oil critical angle on the PM fabrics versus oleophobol concentration for the each UV radiation value are plotted in this graph. In this graph, we can see the three substrate we have used, PM, COT, and BIS. And this is the contact angle, and this is the water and oil plenty. We can see that here. This is the graphical representation of a metric plot is the graph establishing a relationship between the several parts of the variable at the same time. The main effect plot for the critical angle with both water and oil plenty show that the optimum condition to obtain the best result in the terms of both replenty, while COT is the treatment with the medium product on the concentration irradiance. Color evaluation, this was the third parameter that we're going to talk about in the discussion. And in this, we will come to know about this, that color evaluation, the movement of the change in the E on the different treatly samples showed that the effect of the both yellowing and the color changes are minimal with respect to the untreated sample considered as a reference. Here we have taken the reference. In fact, the marginal plot reported as a Gaussian distribution of the del E values which are observed all over the 180 measurements. This includes all three pro pro parameters, finishing process, fabric type, and aging test. Now we're gonna talk about this test, all this finishing process. The main effect plot shows a little difference between the two methods, thermal or UV curing with respect to the sample color. We have discussed the thermal curing and the UV curing. Now we're gonna talk about the difference of the two methods with respect to the sample color. Sample treated by the thermal process are keep the final color more similar to the original. If compared to the UV treated sample, it's mean that thermal process is far more better than the UV treated sample. However, a lower number of the sample were finished by the thermal process rather than the UV. The color differences measurement carried out on the treated sample were homogeneously dispersed between 0.13 to 3.28 values. It means that the thermal method doesn't ensure a lower impact on the fabric's appearance with respect to the UV process. Now, what is fabric type? The fabric type was the most influencing parameter on the color differences due to the finishing process. The sudden effect was revealed, revealed on the COT and VIS. While PM, the color difference were negligible. It can be due to the fabric's color or grammage, which is higher for PM. Moreover, the color difference measured on the PM are dispersed and close to the value of one, while COT and VIS, the value are more dispersed. For VIS, the value are lower than one were registered on the thermal treated sample. Now I'm gonna talk about the aging test. The stability upon the aging of the photographing treatment were checked. Resistance to the aging was tested by the measuring the contact angle of two gram per liter oleophobic treated sample. The sample were stored in the laboratory at room temperature in a dark. The aged sample were still found it hydrophobic with an average of 15 degree reduction of the water contact angle, regardless of the irradiance. Moreover, the aged sample were still found oil repellent, but the average 40% reduction of the oil contact angle was measured. The worst result was obtained on VIS, while if we are talking about the COT fabrics, the decrease was lower. The partial loss of the oliplancy can be due to the rearrangement orientation towards the inner part of the fabrics of the surface chain. These are the reference. That's all from my side. Thank you.